I've been keeping it a secret for quite some time, partly because I was ashamed of what people might think. But after 40 plus years on this round hard rock hurtling through space and time, I kind of reached a point in my life where I can no longer worry about what people might say about me if the truth were to come out. You probably can relate to what I'm talking about. In our early lives, our parents, family and friends don't see it as that big of a deal. But as we all start to grow older, everyone seems to suddenly have an opinion about how you are living your life. Maybe it's a form of deflection. Maybe they think they have our best interests at heart and they want to protect us because they are worried at how we might be judged. Or maybe they're just not understanding enough that sometimes not everyone is the same. But I'm not so sure they realise the impact that can have on someone throughout their whole lifetime. So we tend to pick one of two paths. We either say, to hell with what you think, this is me, deal with it or get the hell out of my way. Or we listen to those outside voices that tell us to play it safe, don't rock the boat, you can't do that. And then those outside voices slowly become inner voices. Voices we start to tell ourselves, even when no one else is watching. Now, when I see the countless people online that take the first option and say to hell with it, this is me, like it or leave it, I admire them so much. It takes a lot of strength and courage to follow something you believe in so strongly in your heart while everyone around you is saying no. It brings me relief to know that there is a whole crowd of people out there who have stayed true to themselves and haven't failed and haven't been shunned by society for what they believe in. Instead, they have found more people like them and built a new community of friends, a new family, so to speak, that believes in them and encourages them. So how did I know I was a little different to the other kids? When was that first inkling that I wasn't quite like my friends and family? The earliest recollection I have was when I turned 10 years old. I had a birthday party and invited maybe 10 or 12 of my friends to my parents' house to celebrate. Now you have to understand that this was the late 1980s and parents' assumptions about what was suitable for kids probably varies a lot to how parenting is done today. My mum had rented a few movies from the local video store for us to watch. One of those movies happened to be the Arnold Schwarzenegger classic Predator. Now I don't want to give too much of the film away if you haven't seen it before, but it is a masterpiece in terms of action, horror, and science fiction. With Arnold and just a small cast of other actors, such as Carl Weathers, Bill Duke, and Jesse Ventura, portraying a special forces rescue team, hunted by a mysterious and invisible creature in the jungles of Central America. It was one moment in particular that was the defining moment for me. Do you know the scene I'm talking about? When Carl Weathers' character Dylan goes back to save Bill Duke's character Master Sergeant, while everyone else is running away to get to the chopper. Dylan, realising that Master Sergeant is already dead, now stands alone to face the Predator. And all we hear and see is the flash from a nearby tree as the Predator's laser cannon blows off Dylan's arm. And in classic 80s slow motion action, the severed arm falls to the ground, still firing the machine gun as it makes a wet bounce off the ground. Now I'm not into violence, I've never been in a fight. The thought of boxing or being hit or hitting anyone makes me cringe. So this scene, even though I knew it wasn't real, was so horrific to me because you knew Carl Weathers' character was done for as he now had to face the Predator with only one arm left. And of course, he valiantly dies at the hands of the Predator while trying to save his friends. You've built up so much empathy for the character and despite all his flaws, you feel like He should at least be one of the characters who gets to survive this ordeal. But instead, the horror is revealed that no one can survive the Predator. Well, no one except Arnie, of course. I sat through that scene as a 10-year-old, feeling like I'd just watched Hamlet. My friends, however, were absolutely traumatised. I think one girl was crying. I don't remember her name anymore as it's been so long, but I'm sorry. And I don't remember having a birthday party again after that one. But what I do remember is having a really obsessive fascination with horror movies. Whenever I would visit a library, video store or bookstore, I loved to check out the eerie covers in the fantasy and horror sections. I would just soak in the creepy images and wonder, what is the story about? But there was always this little voice in the back of my head that said, don't let them see you look at this, or what will they think of you if they knew what you were into? Even now, saying this here, I feel a sense of trepidation. That yes, I like horror, and I like to make comics that have horror in them. 
I like drawing weird creatures that can scare the pants off you. And so that is why after all these years, I finally put those bottled up ideas and visions into my own webcomic. Jim Real Paranormal Investigator is sort of a homage to the types of action, science fiction, fantasy and horror films, comics and books I grew up on. Many from the 70s and 80s that you may have heard of, entertainment that in some ways paved the way for some of the great stuff we see today. And some of them have just fallen into obscurity because maybe they were ahead of their time. Either way, I thought to myself, damn it, if I don't make this now, I never will. I'll be robbing myself and the 10 other people I know of the experience to read about an Afro-wearing, katana-wielding demon slayer who goes on James Bond-like adventures, saving the world and stopping the bad guys. So I'm just going to come out and say it. I like to write horror. No, not just write, I like to draw it. I like to make comic books about it. I love making a horror comic book and I put it online for you to read and enjoy for free. To maybe get you thinking, maybe create a few moments for you to escape the day to day. Also maybe to inspire you to make your own comic one day and forget about what they told you that you should and shouldn't do. Leave a comment below and tell me what movie was the defining one for you that got you hooked on a genre. And don't wait until you're in your 40s to do that thing you've always wanted to do. And if you're younger, get started today. Don't put it off. You might fail a few times, lose a few friends and family along the way, but you'll feel much better about yourself when you embrace the things you love and don't try to hide it. Let's talk soon.